Hello everyone, welcome to Marvelous Movie Mondays. It is actually in the morning when we're recording this. I'm very tired, so my voice is a little less uh, lively. Um, but this is like our ASMR version, I guess you could call it. Um, <laughs> Kelsey, how are you? Um, we're talking She-Hulk episodes six and seven. We're two episodes away from the end. Um, crazy mm-hmm. that it's gone this fast, but uh, how, how you doing? I'm doing good, Dill. It's funny. You say you sound like a zombie and I look like a zombie. <laughs> so yeah. we're uh we're we're on the same wavelength here. Yeah, but we both got like I a totally similar did. shirt on. So we, we did get some hey. sort of memo today. There you go. And because I'm because I'm wearing glasses now, the, the green light that I have for all my She-Hulk episodes is, is much more illuminated today. So um that'll that'll be fun. Um but before we get to She-Hulk. I have news. I don't think Kelsey does, but um, this news is not good news, or maybe it's good news. Maybe it'll end up being good news, but um, I don't know. So Marvel's Blade is going through it. It is having production problems galore. Um, Director Bassam Tariq left the project. I don't know if he was fired or if he left voluntarily. That we don't really know. Um, He will stay on as an executive producer for the film, but he has left as a director, which is always a bad sign just because it means that um, the producer may have had some thoughts that the director maybe didn't agree with. Um, And Mm. I I find it a lot more detrimental when the producer wins that fight because I think it should have all the artistic integrity that the director wants. Um, And usually when the producer interferes, we get, you know, some, you know, it, 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 poses some problems. I'm not saying I don't like Kevin Feige or I don't agree with what he's done, obviously, but, you know, I, I, it makes me a little skeptical to hear that. Uh, Mahershala Ali has said that, you know, the, the problems uh, don't just end there. And I've heard reports about just like the script only being 90 pages long and there only being like two action sequences, which I haven't seen the movie. I haven't read the script. So I don't know if this is a good or bad thing, like I said, like this is all speculation, but apparently they're not happy with how Blade has been turning out. um, And they're kind of just doing like a revamp. People are saying it's going to be pushed another year. Um, That's the rumor. Um, But it seems like Blade is is going through it, but um, maybe this means that they're trying to make it perfect and they're trying to improve it and, you know, actually like, do well with it um or it means that they're going to try to make it like a corporate product and it's just going to feel like every other mcu movie and and that's not a good thing um because i like when they have their own artistic you know individuality i I think that's one of the best things that some of the best mcu movies take like shane black made a shane black movie in the mcu not an mcu movie ryan coogler made a ryan coogler movie in the mcu not an mcu movie so i i Mm -hmm. I do hope we see more of that um and yeah, it, it sucks because I like him as a director, but um, I, I don't think a 90 page script is a bad thing. I mean, short movie is not a bad thing, but it seems like it's it's a 90 page script with not much going on. So it just feels mm. a little underwhelming. But again, I haven't read it. I don't know. This is all rumors, speculation. This is all talk. Um, but yeah, the, the director has left. Still an executive producer. Uh, what, what, what do you think about this, Kels? Well, I'm just curious, like now, who's gonna step in? Who's gonna I don't know. save this <laughs> this save project? Blade. I had no idea any of this was going on. I feel like it should be more talked about in the fandom, yeah. and I, well, I had no well, idea. That's the, and that's the thing is, I feel like it depends on the circles you're in, because like I'm much more in like the movie news side of things in terms of like the, the circles I'm in on Twitter. But like I know a lot of people who are solely on like the TikTok end of here are all the easter eggs and here are all the like fun cast announcements and like like more of the fun side of the mcu Mm -hmm. without getting to the business side so like when you bring up the stuff about like thor love and thunder and all the visual effects artists and how true mistreated they were with that and miss marvel and you know like a lot of half of the fan doesn't even know what you know that's going on you know so so right 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 i feel like we need to have a bridge of both like be able to celebrate what's in the actual art itself but also like being able to see that like the things we like, we have to criticize because we love them and we want them to be better. And when it comes to production problems, like that is, I think, the root of the problem usually 90% of the time is like what happens behind the scenes that translates to the final project. Because what we've seen is that the casting has been awesome. The actual performances in the MCU have been awesome. I haven't seen a bad performance in the MCU in God knows how long. Um, mm. Yes, that Russell Crowe's performance was good, everyone. I will defend it. Um, so, yeah, it's I, I don't know. 
Um, I, I just think, uh, it, yeah, you're right. It should be talked about more. It should be um, a bigger topic of conversation because, like, it, it's a big studio. And, and the fact that, you know, we're seeing a lot of directors being fired because their visions are not lining up. I mean, mm. it's a little sad because it's like that's their their work. They're the director. They should have the creative stamp on it. But yeah, yeah it's like you if you hire a director to take on this project, you should trust the person that you hired that they're going to, you know, that mm -hmm. their vision and whatever they feel is important for this movie is mm -hmm. going to be good. You know, it yeah. just feels like there's a lack of trust happening between yeah. and, executives and, and even even Sam Raimi, directors. who is considered one of the greatest horror directors ever, we saw that like in, in articles that they posted about that movie, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, there were scenes that were added solely to connect the movie to other movies or solely to mm -hmm. like, you know, give Easter eggs or callbacks to things. And it's like, that's not the movie Sam Raimi wanted to make, but he had to because the producer had the overall say. And, and I get a producer needs to step in at some point. Um, but it's just very interesting to see like how much creative control is given or where in the process they step in. Because like with Walter vs. Madness, it was very late. It was like, okay, now we have to do some late reshoots to like fit this in with the MCU. Whereas like some movies like this, Blade, it's, it's very early. Uh, in the process and then you know like stuff like black panther where it like kind of hit right in the middle the script was done the cast was ready and then boom something happens and they have to you know recover and that's less of a production thing more of a real life thing but still like it's very interesting to see where in the process they decide to intervene um and say like okay this is what we're gonna do you now have to sit down director and listen to kevin feige which a lot of the times it works and sometimes it doesn't and I think you know one of my one of our favorites, Captain Marvel, even suffers from a little bit of both in the fact that the stuff that is very clearly Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck stuff is so good. It's like the themes of women and empowerment, and also just like the stuff in the farm and how really beautifully shot that is. And then you have the stuff in space and some of the comedy stuff, which for me doesn't always land as well. So it's like mm -hmm. that's like the best example I think of that battle between director and producer. Um, but yeah, just very interesting to talk about. Um, didn't mean to get this deep this early, but, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's very interesting. But that was my news. Um, Thanks for yeah, sharing, Dill. Yeah. <laughs> Learn something new every day. There you go. So shall we jump into these episodes? We shall jump. Let's let's jump. Shield awesome. episodes six and seven. As I said, we have two more after this. We're rearing to the end. We're now in the official last third of the series of the sitcom. Um, I'm going to call it a sitcom because it still seems like, um, not to tip my hand to whether or not I like these episodes. I like these episodes, but sure. um, it, it, it's less one overarching story. And now it's kind of like branching out into a bunch of different stories. And now it seems like we're in our like big, like climactic twist part of the story. Um, sure. Even though, even though I thought Titania was supposed to be the main villain, but maybe she's behind stuff. I don't know. Um, but now we're kind of getting into the oh, but like this is the crux of like the, the problem and the the conflict of the series. Aside from the, like the feminism and stuff like that, like the the you know the task of having to be a woman in these in the shoes. But like it just seems a little late to be introducing the main conflict. But I don't know how you sure. feel about that. But. Uh, but hey, I'm, well, I'm intrigued to we'll see talk, Dill. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> so, Dill, I'm actually I'm all out of paper in my Spider-Man notebook. I have to get a new one. So wow. my notes are literally all over the place. I was I'm writing like up at the top, like where your the title's supposed to go. I'm <laughs> writing like on pages past. Like my notes are all over the place. So if this is a little jumpy, I apologize in advance. So we're starting off with She-Hulk episode six titled Just Jen. Um, while attending a wedding, Jen gets into another tiff with Titania. Meanwhile, Nikki helps Mallory with a divorce case. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just say this right now. This was my least favorite episode of the series so far. Um, mm. Solely, solely because, and they acknowledge it from the get go. It's like, we this is the episode where this is like the the episode that just kind of takes things and goes off to a wedding for one episode that doesn't really have any relevance to the story and like they acknowledge mm -hmm. it from the beginning but i think that's the problem is that like yes this is a sitcom but when your sitcom's only nine episodes and you're in a bigger franchise the mcu i i just feel like 
we kind of want more of like an overarching story and this one just kind of took us away like i think the only purpose of this episode was to introduce this new character that she mm-hmm. meets this love interest but even mm-hmm. then you could have done it in the first five minutes of the next one you know what i mean like i feel like that's sure because because everything else we're seeing here we're seeing a little bit of that dynamic of like she hulk versus jen and how the public responds to her but that was all what the last episode was about too it was all these guys on trial saying like well i would have dated her if she was she hulk but not jen like we've kind of gotten that already we've gotten the right oh what's her public perception so it's like what was this episode there to do aside from entertain and from entertainment standpoint it's just like another wedding episode i didn't really feel that drawn in um but i'm sure. curious to see what you thought and, and we can go through the episode itself but um yeah i just was like eh, on this and especially and i know a lot of people are up in arms about it, it's not his show but you tease matt Mur- murdoch the episode before and now two episodes later he's still not there and it's like mm. you know it, it almost seems like they put him in the trailer just to have people keep watching even though he sure. didn't show up to the end and then you put his mask in midway through as a way to say, no, no, stick with it. He's coming. But then you still don't bring him in. It was just a weird episode because it just kind of felt like filler, you know? Yeah, totally. I totally see what you're saying, Dill. I think that there are some interesting things that were addressed during this episode. Um, but I will say out of the two, this is definitely my least favorite oh, yeah. out of the two cool. that we watched for this episode. The next one might be my favorite, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. I agree. I agree. So we can get there when we get there. Okay. So we start off this episode with uh, Jen getting a box. Um, it's full of all these goodies. It's full of confetti. It like pops open and explodes in her face. When she opens it and she gets a card asking for this Lulu character who we haven't met yet to be one of her bridesmaids at her mm-hmm. wedding. And we find out that this uh, is a person that she went to high school with. They kind of fell out of touch, but maybe now she's asking Jen to be a bridesmaid out of some sort of like childhood obligation, mm-hmm. something along those lines. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Nikki Mallory will be filling in for Jen while she's gone for these two week, uh, two days. Um, and Nikki will be working with her. Um, So Jen is all excited because she's like, oh, my God, I'm going to go and like show off my She-Hulk. This is a part of me that I'm really coming to terms with. It's going to make everyone so excited. You know, people are going to find me more interesting because I'm I'm She-Hulk. And, you know, she's really putting her her green foot forward. Let's just say that. Mm -hmm. And so she has, you know, she gets her bridesmaid dress altered to fit She-Hulk. She has a dress for the rehearsal dinner that's altered to fit fit She-Hulk. Uh, when she gets there, the bride, um, you know, rightfully so, is a little annoyed. She's like, yeah. hi, Jen. Um, please don't do this at my wedding. I don't need everyone looking at you. I would very much like this day to be all about me. Um, I don't blame her in the slightest. I would also be yelling at my superhero friend to, you know, keep it under wraps and for yeah. my day to be about me. Yeah. But anyone who knows me knows yeah. that that's not surprising. No, in it's, the it's no, and I feel like that's like the one day where you're allowed to be selfish. You're like, this is my happiest day of my life. Like, please yeah. let it be for me because every other day it's it's it, it's not like you you don't live every day being like it's all about me. And if you do, I mean, some people do. <laughs> we know people <laughs> who do, but but it, you know it is what it is. Um, but no, I like I I think that that's a good excuse. Like it's your wedding. You should be able to like I feel completely like she's completely justified in feeling like yo stop stealing my thunder it's like if you invited a celebrity to your wedding like a lot of people are like that'd be so cool if a celebrity was at my wedding but then most people leave talking about the celebrity and not the bride or not you know? right like if you had taylor swift come to your wedding it would be the coolest thing ever but mm. how many people would leave the wedding talking about taylor swift and not kelsey right right you know? i've seen her at, at a few weddings i mean i haven't been to them i just know that she attends right. weddings every now and then and one was like a surprise performance she did for the bride and groom and like i would honestly be over the moon if that happened to me i probably wouldn't walk away being like damn now no one's gonna be talking about me for the rest of the night i would be obviously like on the floor you'd have to resuscitate me if taylor swift showed up well it would, it would depend on if she stayed like if she left right after that fine but like and, and like I, talked to you privately and then left like that's fine but like, yeah if she had stayed afterward like mingled and like there's a crowd of people around her and no one around you that that would have been bad no i think she probably just like put played a few songs for them and then made a graceful exit I, at least i feel like that's something taylor would very much do but when her best when her best friend from high school got married, she was her uh, maid of honor 
And I'm just like, I get it. You're best friends from high school. You're still best friends from this day. Like, obviously, you want your best friend to be your maid of honor. But when your maid of honor is Taylor Swift and she's there the whole ceremony and she's standing there with you at the altar, how many people are looking at you? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. Well, that's that. why that's why I need to get married before you and Zach and like all my groomsmen and groomswomen are going to be famous because I'm like, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't have you all upstaging me. Um, that, but, but that's the, we're going to cross that bridge in a while. Uh, not yeah, the fame part, the, the marriage part. But, right, um, right, right. Yeah. Uh, so Jen promises to just be Jen. She's like, fine, I'll, I'll just be Jen. That's fine. And then we get our title card and it says just Jen, attorney at law. Um and then we find out that at this rehearsal dinner that even though all the bride all the groomsmen and all the bridesmaids have been paired up no no one not to fear Jen will be walking down with a character by the name of Jonathan and we find out who Jonathan is later on and I got kind of excited because I was like ooh a love interest for Jen by the name of Jonathan because they were like ooh everyone loves Jonathan oh my god we're so excited for you to meet Jonathan I was like me too so then we cut to the B plot, as we'll call it, and we are introduced to the character of Mr. Immortal, a.k.a. Craig Hollis. Mm -hmm. uh, he is seeking uh, Mallory Book's help because he is in quite a bit of trouble. Um, he's married multiple people. And by the way, by, you know, his way of trying to get out of all these marriages was by faking his own death because as it says in his name he is immortal so he cannot die so he just pretends to be dead and then goes about living his life but now all of these people have seemingly found out about this and they're suing him a great deal i i honestly think this is like a much more intriguing storyline it is the b plot mm. but i find it, find it to be better only because the, the b plot the better plot um just because <laughs> because it's like this show because it's a sitcom, I like the idea of every episode is like a different f case, and you can bring mm -hmm. in these really wacky characters that would never be have their own movies or shows. Like this guy's never going to be the central, you know. You're never going to see a movie about the immortal guy, or whatever. Right. His name is. The what is his name? Mister Mister Immo Immortal. All right, I was close. The immortal guy, whatever. <laughs> um, but like you're never going to have a Mister Mister Immortal movie. But like I like that. Like in this episode, you can like kind of make it about that because he's like not really. He's not a hero, obviously, but he's not like a villain to the point where like he's going to be someone super villain. He's just like a a sleazy guy, you know, who's who wants to take the cheap way out. And and I like that. It's like you know, you use these weird, odd superpowers and superhumans to like you know, create a fun, you know, narrative about like a court case and like, you know, how to get that under control. Like, I, I actually kind of like that. So, so I, I didn't mind this B plot. Um, sure. I think the character's a little annoying, but, but again, it was, it was <laughs> fun, fun, amusing courtroom, like law hijinks, which I wish honestly more of the show had. Yeah, no, no deal. I agree with you. I think that if maybe, this Lulu character and this wedding was kind of talked about like maybe earlier on in the series. Like we cut, like we see Jen Walter's calendar and the date is circled and it says like Lulu's wedding. And then she's like, Oh, right. I have to get a dress for that. I have to remember or like whatever it is, like something really quick, like early on, like episode two or three. And then when we finally get this wedding, it doesn't feel as random. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And I yeah. guess then they couldn't have made the joke that's like, oh, you're probably thinking that this feels like really at an inconvenient time in the series. And that's because most weddings are very inconvenient in your life. And, well, I don't know. I guess the payoff of that joke uh, isn't, yeah. I think, essential. You and know what I mean? Is, like, a lot of wedding episodes, it's like the character, it's like the whole cast is there. Like new girl. Yes. All in there. Like, like they're yes, all there. Yes, yes, yes. And Taylor Swift is also there. Um, so like it's, it's one of those <laughs> things where I, I, I think like, you know, you you have this wedding character is with this wedding scene, but it's only one character going off and doing it. So it's it's a little right. less of like that that extra oomph for character building because you only have one character there. You know, like if it was someone from the office, then they all could have been going. They get post the wedding. Whatever, you know, um, Pug. Oh my God! You just reminded me. I we haven't seen Pug in like a minute. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm really upset because I yeah. he's my favorite character. Uh, so I did look into Mr. Immortal in my handy dandy um, Marvel encyclopedia. Um, 
And it turns out he is a character from the comics. His real uh, alias in the comics is Craig Hollis, as they say in the show. And he is most notable in the comics for creating the Great Lakes Avengers, which kind of just sounds like a Michigan-based uh, Avengers. They're kind of a ragtag. Is Wolverine group. in them? Or no. no. No, but another X-Men is in it, and they're kind of like this ragtag group of misfits he creates. They're not really credible. They're not really taken seriously in the comics. And so their members are Squirrel Girl, Leather Boy, Monkey Joe, Tippy Toe, Grasshopper, and Deadpool. Those oh. are the members of the Great Lakes Avengers. And Oh, all holy shit. I've totally forgot the other big news we have to talk about. Which we'll oh talk about right, duh. Um, duh. You know what? Let's save it for next episode. Let's save it for next episode, just because it's a lot to talk about, and I don't want to ruin the rhythm. And we also don't have a lot of time, so like, let's let's do next episode. Okay. Yeah. All righty. No. Oh, ooh, the anticipation is killing me, Jill. Well, so, it's coming out in, in a few years. So like, we're in no rush, but you know. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, also, a character that is associated with the Great Lakes Avengers that we just got introduced to. Um, so, part of the plot, one of the you know missions that the Great Lakes Avengers goes on is they get into a poker game, and what's at stake here? The use of the word champions, and they win it from Hercules, who we just got introduced to in the post credit scene of Thor: Love and Thunder. Mm -hmm. So, I thought that that was really interesting. So, essentially, yeah, that's all I have to say. There's, like I said, sorry, my notes are all over the place. Okay, okay. At some point, we jump back to the wedding. Oh, okay, wait, wait. So, Nikki and Mallory just start, you know, ganging up on Mr. Immortal. They're like, how could you do this? It sounds like you just have no, you know, you just can't take confrontation. You couldn't have been a, an adult about any of this. Like, they're just berating him just being like what kind of human being are you like this is atrocious how does mr mortal respond doing what he does best which is killing himself he throws himself out the window of the building yeah. and like lands on a security car but lo and behold he just dusts himself yeah, off and continues whole, on like, with his day yeah. yeah cracks all his muscle his uh, like bones back into place and he's good to go for a second I was nervous. I was like, this show just took a really dark turn. I thought that there was going to be a whole thing where, like, like one of the clients just, like, killed himself on site, and now they had to deal with, like, the the repercussions from <laughs> that. Though he just said he was immortal. No, I, I don't know. You I thought it was I, just, like, I, not work that time? If it freaked me out when it when it first happened. I was like, because I was so startled. I was like, oh, my God, he just threw himself out the window. And they, but, yeah. the, you know, the girls didn't think too much of it. Yeah, Nikki just up. said, "Well, Cause just at least because like, because it was so funny because like that's like it's such dark humor, like you said, like it's dark. Yeah, it's, it's you know, yeah, guy yeah, jumping yeah. out the window, but it's like, but it's kind of funny to me because I'm just like, he, he, that's his way out, not just in <laughs> relationships, but just in awkward conversations in all in all situations. He just runs out the window. I was like, Jesus Christ." Yeah, it was it was a lot. It was very funny how he just kind of like 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 a fish like yeah. flying through the air, just like yeah. It was it wow. was very funny. So then we cut back to the wedding and uh, Lulu, we have this short, uh, not the wedding yet. We're, maybe it is the wedding. I can't remember. Maybe we're still, I think we're still at the rehearsal dinner. Uh, but then we cut back to that and uh, Lulu is asking about Jen. She's like, so what's going on with you? Like, how you been? And Jen's so excited to talk about her life. She's like, oh, I'm actually doing so well. I just got this new job. I had a law division. I, I, as you saw earlier, I now have superpowers. And Lulu's just like, no, that's not, that's not what I meant. Like, do you have a guy in your life? Like, what's your love life? She only wants to talk about her love life as if that's the only thing in Jen's life that will make her feel mm. complete or validated or successful is if, you know, she marries someone at the end of the day. Well, and and I think she knows the answer to that. And it kind of like puts the attention back on her because she's got everything. She's happy. Mm. She's getting married. She's like, would well, you have anything? Oh, no. Like, it's almost like a you know, answer this like question so I can feel even better about myself because sure. I don't have the superpowers, but you know what I have? I have a ring on this finger from about to. Yeah. 
I just think it was a great moment Dill, to showcase like the duality between like, mm -hmm. you know, there's just many types of women out there and some women, mm -hmm. they prioritize their love life. There's there, you know, they're, they have whole Pinterest boards about getting married and what their honeymoons are going to be like and what the rest of their lives are going to look like and family and kids and all that. Mm -hmm. And there's, and that women, that kind of woman is totally justified and valid. And I wish those types of women all the happiness. But there's also women in the world like Jen Walters who get amazing career opportunities and promotions and have other things going on that are just as um, validating and successful. And, you know, we just have to acknowledge all different types of women and all different types of desires and aspirations because they're all correct in their own way. And I just loved how they had this little moment. And then we find out that Titania is at the wedding. She says that she's uh, on a date with uh, someone from the groom side of the party. And Jen is like, oh my God, like, why are you, you're just here to mess with me. I know you are. Like, there's no way that you're just attending this wedding. And Lulu and Titania look at Jen like, okay, like, stop making this all about you. Like, you're being irrational. You're being crazy. Titania says, you're being really loud, which is, you know, just another one of those silly little criticisms that, that women, women unfairly like get um, oftentimes. And so she's like, Jen needs a minute to herself. She goes outside and she is snacking on some nuts, I think. And a very handsome gentleman strolls over and is like, hey, didn't mean to bother you, but, you know, just want to come strike up a conversation. And we find out that his name is Josh, a J name. I, didn't, If you can remember our, discuss, say, our discussion. I was going to say, didn't you, you say the, the worst name was of all the oh, J names? I believe that name was Josh. Um, yeah. So interesting. But, you know, that, we're just funny. flirting. We're having a fun time with Josh. I'm I'm really into Josh. I'm I'm happy for Jen. Were I think she just, just like her. I, I'll tell you, I think one of the reasons why I don't, and I know we're not spoiling this because anyone who's watched this has probably sure. seen it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know if this is why I didn't enjoy this episode as much, but I clocked it from the start. I knew. Okay. I, I, knew, I, I knew. I knew. Not okay. just because he was like named Josh, but because <laughs> he, when you get a guy who is so good, too good mm. to be true, it, it's the Comron thing. Like I was fooled then. Mm. You know, I, I thought, no, this is a good guy for, for her. Um, gotcha. We, when the MCU has a love story where we are actually going to get like some real something between them. We usually get a lot of that guy's perspective as well. Like we did with Bruno and Miss Marvel. Like we didn't get yeah. with Comrade and Miss Marvel. Here it's the same thing. We're only seeing Jen's point of view. This guy's brand new. I, it's like one of those innocent, uh, guilty and pro until proven innocent things. Well, actually, no, it's the phrase is innocent until proven guilty. For me, it's guilty until proven innocent with love interest in the MCU. If, if immediately you're guilty until you can prove that you're not. And so from the start, I was just like, nope, nope, no, nope. it's, it's, it's too good to be true. It's too good to be, too good to be true. Yeah. Sometimes when something appears to be too good to be true, Dill, that's exactly what it is. Um, mm. I'll, I'll be honest, though. I was I was suspicious. I was hesitant, but I was more hopeful than anything. I think that's the small part of me that's a hopeless nope. romantic. Um, I, yeah, I am, too. And I immediately was like, nope, nope. <laughs> this guy's bad news. I, I just knew it. I knew it. I don't, so, I think it's, you know, I think, I think it's also because, sorry, I'll, I'll no, go ahead. That last thought on the episode, but like, the, this is like, I think I, everyone's been saying Titania is the main villain of the series. And I'm like, is she? I was like, mm -hmm. she's done nothing for me. Like she's really done nothing. She's, she's yeah. the biggest antagonist has been the, the perception on Jen as a woman. Like that has been like the yeah. biggest driving force antagonizing Jen's, you know, progression as a character. Titania has done nothing for me. So the fact that everyone's like, yeah, she's the main villain in the series. I was like, well, she needs to do something. And I was like, as soon as this guy shows up, I'm like, you know what? She's at the wedding. She said she's a plus one of someone else. I was like, I bet you they're working together. I bet like, that's like, that's it. Like, this is where we mm. start to see her villainous side really kick in. So I think this is more of a Titania plan with him as like the henchman. Um, because like it, it was 
where that's why I was able to figure it out so soon as I was like, she has to do something right to make herself a better right. villain aside from just stand there and, and be a bitch, you know, like I was like, yeah, hey, sure. Something, something's got to happen. And, and I was like, she's going to do something at this wedding. And she didn't. And I was like, oh, maybe this guy's working for Titania then. Cause like, that's, that's kind of where I was, I was at with this. Cause I was mm. like, she has to come in at some point and do something. Um, Cause I feel like she's been so underwhelming as a character. Um, so I feel like this is probably, maybe they're not connected. Maybe this is just another villain uh, coming into the story, uh, you know, two episodes away from the end, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Dill. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say my thoughts about Titania after once mm. we discuss their fight and everything, their little brawl. Uh, so we cut back to the divorce case with Mallory and Nikki, and we see that seven women and ring one man has been bamboozled by Mr. Immortal, making Mr. Immortal a fluid character. I don't know what he identify as, but he doesn't discriminate when it comes to having romantic partners. So good for Mr. Immortal. Um, so basically, they're all talking about all the money that they lost, all the hardships they went through with being married to Mr. Immortal, how he royally screwed them over. Um, so one of them um, is talking about how there's $75,000 of, um, they have $75,000 of credit card debt. One has had a kid with Mr. Immortal and Sebastian, the one gentleman in the room, says that he uh, paid $10,000 on a New Orleans jazz funeral for uh, Mr. Immortal when he died and he would like to be compensated for that. Um, and one of the women reveals that the reason that they were able to find out that Mr. Immortal was immortal and faking his deaths time and time again was because one of them found a video on a website called Intelligentsia, which is, mm. I guess, the MCU version of Reddit. We're just like, or at least different uh, pockets of Reddit where a, a groups of like like I forget what Mallory says, but she just says like man children, like man babies just go on and and uh, incels, if you will, just go on and and complain and and say you know hateful things about women and and, mm. and what have you. Uh, oh, hateful man babies! I I wrote it down actually. Uh, so she one of the women saw a video of Mister Immortal uh, getting hit by a car and then walking away seemingly fine, and that's how they find out about his powers. Um, and then we also find out that not only was he lying to them about his powers, but he was also using multiple fake identities. So now this case has become way bigger than Mallory initially intended. And she says, you are going to have to pay all these women. Like, there's just no getting around that fact. Like, you're going to have to give up some of your assets here. And so... Um, Mr. Immortal is able to compensate them with the stocks that he bought in Apple in 1981. He has some gold from his first wife, Baroness C Cromwell. He says that her name is. Yeah. And uh, they're able to just split that eight ways and then call it a day. But the women are like, hello, I was with him for 18 years. She was only with him for three. Why are we getting paid the same amount here? Uh, which is fair. You know, they all feel like they need to be compensated for uh, what they're rightfully owed. Um, I did look into Baroness Cromwell because I wanted to know, um, you know, her backstory, if she was real, just a name they were throwing out there. Whenever they name drop someone, I, I got to know. I got to go dig in. So I didn't find anyone specifically by the name Baroness Cromwell, but I did find a Lily Cromwell. And basically all she is is a vampire. There wasn't much on her. But she's <laughs> well, it's just still something. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a vampire. That, that's Fun fact, not what I am. Um. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So good for Lily. Um, and apparently she is all this gold, so doubly good for her. Um doubly. So I, I like doubly. Doubly. I'm a, yeah. it's early. My brain. No, I I get you. No, mush. So now we're back. It's officially the wedding day. The bridesmaids are in their frou-frou little pink dresses. Um, and Jen is just getting abused. First, uh, Lulu is yelling at her to start helping her clean up the place. Uh, that's definitely not your duties as a bridesmaid. Um, <laughs> and now she's getting told that she needs to wash all of the groomsmen's shirts because they got uh, a little heated playing Mario Kart, uh, as they said. And uh, which, we which find I'm out... 
I, I honestly, I just made a face, but I should say Zach and his groom's party. Uh, we we did we did play Mario Kart the night before the wedding. So oh I, yeah, I guess that's that's the thing. Yeah, in the hotel room we did. So so I, wait, I sneered hilarious. at it at first, but then I was like, wait, no, no, I did that. So yeah, I was Yoshi. <laughs> nice. I Always. think my Mario Kart character. I Mario. Sorry, Mario. Yeah, it's a tomato. tomato. <laughs> <laughs> sorry i always say mario <laughs> people are like you're eh. it's sorry it's just my heart so you're italian Jer too jersey you accent gotta, gotta, yeah. i'm more irish than italian dill okay i'm yeah, like mario mario <laughs> mario mario um, mcdonald yeah so the mario, mario character my go-to pick it's if not for a while it was toad but mm, he's kind of slow right. so then i <laughs> i you give toad like energy toad. Do. all right fine I'll, I'll take that it's the hufflepuff I, i'm a slytherin how dare you oh are you really oh we've yeah i took this. Yeah, okay. i i took the quiz again all right well admit that's why you've aged out of toad yeah, exactly so but now i so i pick like uh, waluigi now <laughs> absolutely not he's the slowest one you pick in waluigi if you pick like waluigi donkey kong like you're you're bowser bound to be last bowser no none of those now i go that then i started alternating between the two babies either baby mario or baby peach because i think they're quick mario. you know quick and yeah. little no not baby luigi is there a baby luigi well it depends on the version you play probably but what well i play i'm i haven't played in a minute this is you know from childhood i'm talking about ah. here so there was back when I played it, there was only Baby Mario, Baby Peach. Uh, gotcha. But those are my go tos. Um, so we are finally introduced to the Jonathan character, Dill. Oh, God, I love this little moment. And he turns out to be a little dog, an old mm. dog, a little like Chihuahua looking uh, dog. His little tongue's hanging out. They say that, oh, they just had to resuscitate him this morning. And sometimes he leaks. Leaks out of what? And what leaks out of him, I'm not sure. But just something to watch out for during this uh, wedding. Um, and then Jen's like, well, what else am I going to do to have a good time other than get drunk? That is what weddings are for. You get drunk. Um, but Lulu, the awful character that she is, the cheapo, trashy character that she is, does not have an open bar at her wedding. It is a cash bar. So Jen Walters, good thing she's a lawyer because she's got that money, money. She's throwing dollar bills at the bartender all night just trying to, you know, get a little loosey-goosey here. So she gets pretty drunk and none of, uh, lo and behold, Josh comes over to strike up another conversation with her. Uh Jen kind of gets into talking about how, you know, she just wanted to be She-Hulk. She doesn't really, like, get the institution of marriage, although she's not. It's not that she doesn't, you know, think love is great. It's not that she doesn't believe in love or anything. It's just that she just wanted one night. She just wanted to go to one wedding where she could show off being She-Hulk because everybody loves She-Hulk. They've expressed that to her numerous times and she just wanted to feel amazing and josh the good guy that he is uh says well i think that you're pretty amazing as you are and she's like oh but you have to see what my she hulk hair looks like like it's amazing and he's like oh i would love to see it sometime and that is when jen is like oh god i'm about to puke so she runs outside and pukes into the bushes and Titania starts comforting her. She's like, yeah, let it all out. And then just sucker punches her right in the face, sends Jen flying. Jen is so drunk. She's like, I can't even turn into She-Hulk right now. This is crazy. And plus, yeah. like, Titania, like, you're just annoying at this point. Like, you're not even, like, doing not, anything not super... Villain. Not super yeah exactly like it, jen's like why are you so obsessed with me like i won the lawsuit fair and square just like leave me alone at this point and titania like i guess some of her motivations get revealed a little bit in this moment here she's like listen i you have everything that i want and you don't even want it you don't even deserve it you get all this attention you get all this free press 
you know, you, you're this unstoppable, you know, super being, and that's everything that I want to be. And that's everything that I've worked to be obviously as a superhuman influencer. And it's just unfair that you get to live this lifestyle that I want, you know, so, uh, seamlessly and you don't even want it. Um, Jen, you know, obviously hulks out as the fight, uh, continues and, you know, she doesn't even really defeat Titania, like Titania, Titania kind of like is her own worst enemy in this moment. And she <laughs> takes herself out by slipping on ice or whatever it is and like breaking her teeth on the floor. And so she kind of just runs out of the wedding all humiliated. And, and I, this is the moment I decided to, I was like, Titania is honestly my least favorite part of this show. Yeah. And she should be, be she should be the best. I mean, the antagonists in Marvel lately have been really good. Like, you know, from Killmonger, Thanos, mm -hmm. and now like you know, Gore the God Bitcher Butcher Bitcher. <laughs> <laughs> Gore, Gore the, the God, God Bitcher. Um, Titania is more of the bitcher. Son of a bitch. Bitch. She's bitching all the time. Um no, it got, got Gore the oh, man, it's a, this is my inevitable <laughs> because because you can't say inevitable. I can't say Gore the God Butcher. There we there go. There you go. Um Gore the God <laughs> <laughs> anyway, him, he, himself, yeah, that guy, Christian Bale, he, him, um, yeah, great character. So it's like it's disappointing to see them fumble the ball so much here, especially because yeah. it's like it's a campy villain, but so is Agatha Harkness, and they nailed her, right, so, right. They literally yeah. nailed her to the to the witch's post. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. Yeah, I don't really know what's going on with Titania here. Mm -hmm. I like your theory about Josh kind of, you know, being the henchman for her. But at the end of the day, I don't even feel like Titania would use henchmen. And yeah. I don't think yeah. uh, we'll we'll get to the next episode when we get there. We're almost done with this one. Um, so Titania runs out of the wedding. Obviously, now Jen is in She-Hulk form and Lulu comes strolling in in the ugliest wedding dress I've ever seen in my life, I'll be honest. Um, and I and I used to watch Say Yes to the Dress religiously, but Lulu takes the cake when it comes to ugly wedding dresses that I've seen. It's just so bad in so many oh. ways. And But luckily, she's not upset that uh, Jen is in She-Hulk form. She's pretty drunk herself. So she's just like, oh, my God, I can't believe She-Hulk's at my wedding. Honestly, the reaction that I would have if Taylor Swift were at my wedding, as mm -hmm. we said before. Um, so then we cut back to Nikki and Mallory, who are, you know, being a little chummy after uh, settling the case with Mr. Immortal. They're uh, looking at Intelligentsia, the website that they were talking about earlier. And they find this like corner of it that is just filled with people shitting on She-Hulk. They're like plotting ways how to kill her, that she needs to, you know, be eliminated. Like it's, it's just all kinds of death threats about Jen Walters. And obviously Nikki being Jen's best friend is concerned for her friend's well-being. She thinks that they need to tell her. Um, they end up do uh, telling, she ends up telling her in a voicemail in the car um, afterwards and then we the final scene is we cut to Jen and Josh sharing some fries at the end of the night mm -hmm. um, and then we zoom out kind of you know WandaVision style when we zoomed out of the TV in the first like episode there's something going on there's somebody watching them they're being filmed Jen Walters vitals are being recorded you know there's all this scientific mumbo jumbo happening and we see that whoever this this group of people are they have been working on a stronger needle that I, I'm assuming is strong enough to penetrate Jen's uh, She-Hulk skin um, so that they can get her blood. So we see that that's still going on from when we got first introduced to the, I forget their name, the Wrecking Crew, the Wrecking, the Wreck Crew, the Crew of Wreckers. When she got jumped by those group of guys who tried yeah, to penetrate yeah. her skin before. Mm -hmm. And like last episode, like episode five, Dill, no PCS, no post credit yeah. scene at the end of I, episode I six. I don't think we're going to get any more just because I, I, the first four episodes, my theory, first four episodes are the ones that screened for critics. Uh, they got them all at once first day and they all have post credit scenes my thought was that they did that as a way for the critics to then tell everyone else there's a post credit scene after every episode so then we'd be all ah, excited to watch gotcha. and then 
you know, now we're here. Um, so it, it seemed like maybe more of a marketing ploy, but but then don't say there's a post credit scene in every episode. Kevin Feige say there's a post credit scene in a lot of them, or in the first four, or there's a post credit scene in the after the first episode. You'll have to tune in to see if there are more after the next few. You know, but yeah, it's very nitpick. That's not a big problem for me. I'm just like whatever. Let's go on to the next one because we did have two episodes, which I didn't even realize <laughs> this morning when I was going. To record, I was like, wait, yeah. we're doing two episodes today, and I had to watch the second one. And I'm glad I did because I really enjoy the second one. So Kelsey, yeah. let's, yeah, let's yeah, go yeah. into the second one. What, what's the second one called again? The Retreat? Episode 7, The Retreat. Yay. All right, after, after getting ghosted by Josh, Jen spirals while checking in with Emil at his wellness compound. Mm-hmm. Um, I gotta say, Dill, Emil has turned out to be like one of my favorite parts of the show, if not the I, favorite. I think they're taking some okay villains from the past like him like zemo and like really making them Re- feel like revamping fun them. characters yeah like i'm yeah. really enjoying this and i'm interested to see where they continue with this like like who else they might you know like we're getting justin hammer in armor wars like let's get more of him even though he was always kind of like a, a funny character which is another bit of news you know, honestly this whole episode has brought forth so much news um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give that news armor wars is no longer a tv show it's going to be a full film um so they're nice. scrapping it completely. They're going back to the books and they're reworking it. Um, and it probably won't come out till a little later than expected. That's why they didn't present it as part of their Comic-Con slate when he did the timeline. Ah. Because, um, yep. So that's a little bit of news. But we'll save the Hugh stuff for next week still. But uh, a lot yeah, of news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. A lot of news. So... We start off this episode with a dating montage. Things between Josh and Jen are seemingly going very well. They're, they you they are say going on too good to be true. One could say too good to be true. Exactly. Um, they're going on all these cute little dates. They're going to food trucks. They're going to drive-in movies. Um, and on date number three, lucky date number three, um, the they. They uh, end up sleeping together. There's no other way to say it. I never thought that I would be saying that in context of a Marvel project of any kind. But Eternals. here we are. Eternals. Yes, yes. I guess that the was the steamy. first big one. That um, scene is seen on the dude. Well, and, and I feel like they've, they've been like, I feel like we've never seen sex scenes except for Eternals. But we've always kind of like heard, like, I feel like Iron Man once woke up in the bed of someone and, and, and Star-Lord no, woke for up in sure. the bed of someone. Like, like it, <clears> they, they've these characters fuck it's just we don't see it um which like i don't know, right. really know if we need to see it all the way but like also like it's just a little weird considering like a lot of action films we do see at least like the the pre you know the, the lead up um right you know bef- before the lights go out and, and we just never see that in marvel so it's interesting that we, we got a little mm-hmm. bit of it this time or at least you know- the, the morning after you know, Jill, I really appreciate this moment now more than ever because all of those scenes have been showcased on, like, just a man sleeping with some random woman, like, you know, getting his rocks off, whatever, Iron Man, Peter Quill, what have you, where this just showcases a woman in her very normal, very, you know, late late 20s dating life where it's like, yeah, if I if I want to do this, I'm going to do this. And it's perfectly like socially acceptable mm-hmm. and uh, great. So maybe that's uh, why yeah. this feels so fresh and different uh-huh. because it's like totally like a woman at the forefront taking control. You know, she pulls him into her her apartment and, you know, she, she does what she wants to do. And I think yeah, that, and that's very admirable. I, I think admirable. that's just one one thing with pop culture nowadays is I feel like it's a lot more sex positive, which is good. Um, yeah. You know, not not shying away from it, not making it this big taboo thing. Like, you know, it, it's I, I think it's good, especially in in media that is not, you know, I don't think kids necessarily need to see it, but like young adults, like teens even, like like high schoolers. Like, I think it's important mm-hmm. to be like, you know, like there there's a way of like, you know, sex positivity is a thing um you know it's not like this big thing to be feared i mean it's it's life um you know not in a graphic sense but also being Mm -hmm. like no but like you know you can have fun if it's consensual and you know you're you know in the right relationship or in the right situation in this case at the right age to just have fun and and having fun is part of life that i feel like a lot of media just for so long was either like it was a dark thing when when sex would happen or it was like mm. a only when they finally fell in love like and and sometimes nowadays it's not that you know like mm-hmm. people have sex whenever um 
and and i think that's something that like a lot of reality television like the bachelorette like they had a bachelorette a few years ago who was like all about that like very sex positive yeah um, yeah and, yeah and, and i think we're, we're seeing that a little bit here which i think is good especially with like all the feminist themes like um i've heard some people say like this was a great episode because it didn't have to like spoon feed you all the feminist themes but i think this the show this episode specifically is still giving us that stuff it's just i agree it's not spoon fed but i think that's what makes it really nice too is that it's like just now existing and we're kind of just seeing it in real time and kind of just learning that way without having to be like sat down and read a textbook about it um i think it works both ways i think it's effective the other way as well but i think now it's just kind of like we can just kind of see a woman in her like you said in her happiest in her com most confident obviously it doesn't end up that way uh because you know, shitty things happen after this but you know it's nice to see just characters like embracing their age and their sexuality and, and just owning themselves and, and and you know how they carry themselves and it's, it's all really lovely to see especially um like you said because it's been a more of a male dominated franchise for so long right exactly um oh my god i had a thought and it totally like popped sorry like i ran I, I had a just like disappeared speech yeah no it's no it's all good uh, so they end up sleeping together <laughs> and, uh, uh, if it comes to me, wow, it really just like men in black, like my mind just got a race in that moment. Wow. Good reference. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, yeah. So they end up sleeping together. And first of all, the biggest red flag for me in this moment was that she woke up and he wasn't there in the morning. And that's like, I guess more yeah. acceptable if it's just like a one night stand situation, you know, you meet each other at a bar, you go home together, whatever the, the first person, you know, feel, if the person who's mm, home, it's not leaves without saying, but I feel, well, yeah, but that's the thing. I, I feel like you'd always be like, I'm, I'm heading out. Thank you. Or just like a, sure. yeah, see you later. Or, or just, or at least some acknowledgement. And, and also or just like, bye. <laughs> I mean, what we see at the end also, like I find it hard to believe you would sleep through that but i don't know maybe not so, I've, I've never had someone take a flash photo of my face while sleeping but i assume i would wake up but i don't know i i don't know uh i don't know we'll we'll, but yeah, we'll get I see how it was a there. red flag especially but, from a character perspective seeing how cl into each other they were to know that he would just leave it was a little weird yeah and like m for me dill it's like okay no we've been it's not like this hasn't been just about sex because like exactly. we've been going on dates exactly. and now we finally did this thing and you're not here the next morning like mm -hmm. that that would bother me that would immediately like i i'd be throwing a tantrum if i were jen walters but maybe jen walters is more adjusted than i am good for her um so she just shoots him a text casually you know she doesn't see anything by it she's just like hey that was really fun can't stop smiling and you know uh the morning goes by she gets to work and uh nothing it's it's radio silence she's text she's checking her phone every now and then she's like weird he hasn't responded yet and we just went from texting every minute of every day and now he's not responding to me uh pretty sketchy he ends up not responding to jen for days and what when we get back to the office we found we find out that jen has been nominated for female lawyer of the year how fun how great yeah. for her um yeah, because it's it's a great prize but oh but it, it's only the female lawyer it's, it's not the lawyer yeah here. um that annoyed me but but I, I know that's the point that was the point trying to make and oh you know. this is what i was gonna say what like what you were saying about all the spoon feeding is that this show does a great job of not feeling like very finger waggy like it's not it's not like yelling at the audience about you know we need to treat women better and do better it's just mean it's just merely showing the scenes unfold and then when audience members feel icky afterwards after watching them get hit on or jen get undermined or jen get mansplained to it's like huh why did that make you feel icky is it perhaps maybe because this happens in real life and it's not and it's very unfair let's talk about it. And like, yeah, that's support. where I feel like the show does a really great job of like, you know, bringing attention, a societal issue without, you know, putting on like a parental tone, because I just even, feel like that doesn't work well with and even the positive and even the positives. It's like, Oh, am I watching a woman who's just confident in her 
you know, whatever her age is, maybe thirties, just like having fun, having sex, and and being young and embracing her single life. Like, oh, maybe I shouldn't judge people then for who do that as well. Um, yeah, it's another thing too. Exactly. It's just like watching experiences to then make your own judgments rather than have the show tell you exactly how to feel. That's a good point. Yeah. And Jen also mentions that she's not really concerned with all the intelligentsia, you know, memes and and death threats and stuff. She's like, I don't care what a bunch of like weirdos have to say about me online because they're not saying it to my face because they know I would crush them. Which is which is also good because I feel like as soon as they introduced that plot point at the end of the last episode, I was like, oh, we're really going to make that like the central conflict is all these death mm. threats. Like, I, I just feel like because everyone... I mean, honestly, every celebrity gets some. And, and I, at this sure. point, it's assuming to believe that all the Avengers are celebrities. So it's like, this is just kind of like a cheap kind of story route to go. So I'm glad they kind of just nipped that in the bud and was like, nah, it's not a big deal, you know? Right. So now it's Sunday and we still haven't heard anything from Josh. No responses from Josh yet. And we get a call from Emil Blonsky's parole officer saying that he got a notification that the uh, inhibitor device that Emil Blonsky is wearing is malfunctioning. And maybe it's because Emil's trying to take it off. Maybe he's going full abomination. We don't know. Excuse me. We don't know what's going on. So he calls Jen and Jen's like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll check on him. I'll check in on him. No worries. And the parole officer's like, actually, I was kind of hoping that you'd kind of go with me as like basically my muscle because I'm I'm scared. I don't know what I'm walking into here. I, I could use a Hulk on my side. And so Jen and the parole officer make his way to um, Emil's lovely estate. He has all kinds of, he's nice. he yeah. like acres of land. He has all <laughs> kinds of different properties. He has a yurt. He has like a yoga studio. He has the house that he lives in. Um, so when we get there, we find out that the really, the only reason why his uh, device started malfunctioning um, or at least seemingly at least is because he walked by an electric fence um, and it, you know, made the, the, device go a little berserk but it was only because he was rescuing his favorite chicken obviously you need to rescue the favorite chicken uh so on um jen's way out of the compound two beings i'll just say start fighting uh they're they come like barreling through the woods uh one of them gets thrown onto her prius it completely shatters the windshield messes up the hood she's like what the heck is going on she she hulks she disrupts the fight she's like what what's going on here like you just wrecked my car and we find out that these two men are man bull he says that he he's part man, part bull, as as we, you know, it's in the name. Um, he was a scientific experiment gone wrong, don't ask. And that our other gentleman that he is fighting is El uh El Aguila. 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 I was so close. Oh my god. Thank you. Dracula. El Aguila. El Aguila. Yeah, the, the accent is on the A, so you go, ah, like that's the ah, Gula. El ah, Gula. Ah, gotcha. Sounds like, like, a, like Dracula. A, like a Dracula. Dracula. Exactly. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, you know. So we find out that these are just two peop uh, two super beings, I should say, that are just trying to work through their differences in a safe um, environment. Obviously, there's their uh, mortal enemies, nemesises, nemesi, if you will. Um, and, you know, they're. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I did look into these two characters in my Marvel Encyclopedia. Uh, Man Bull, the only thing that I could find out about him was that he was a part of the Frightful Four which was essentially the anti-Fantastic Four. Um, and the other members of this team were the Taskmaster and Titania. They are also, uh, at some point, are members of the Frightful Four in the comics. And El Agula, um, his real name is Alejandro Montoya. Um, and he, basically his words are, he has electrostatic charges that generate in his nervous system. He's also very good with um, he has good swordsmanship skills, as we see um, in the little uh, town hall meeting that they're He's having in the studio. Yeah. 
He is a swashbuckler. That is, uh, I, I did write that down. Thank you. For yeah, that you know, a swashbuckler, which we also, which, which you kind of give to pirates, but has also been extended to like men with swords, you know, swashbuckling, you know, right. your Robin Hoods and your Zoros and all that. It was very Zoro right. to me. Um, it, you um, know, he was giving me very um, Anigo Montoya vibes from the Princess yeah, Bride. Another swashbuckler. Yep, yeah, very good. Girl, exactly. Yeah. Um, but he wants to make sure everyone knows that he is not a matador. Just because he is Spanish and from Spain does not mean he is a matador. He is a swashbuckler. Very different. Um, so Jen gets stuck on the compound and she's just walking around look, desperately looking for service because she needs to know if Josh is ever going to text her back. Uh, she's getting obsessive at this point. And she stumbles upon a support group, which is we see the two characters that we met before, Man Bull, um, El Agula, um, and we also are introduced to two new characters. We're introduced to Porcupine. <laughs> now, Porcupine, a.k.a. I'm just his laughing because name... I love this episode. Oh, it's so yeah. Keep going. I, I loved it so much, Jill. I loved it so much. Um, so we get introduced to Porcupine. His real name is Alexander Alexander Gentry in the comics. Um, he was a weapons designer for the U.S. government. He made the Porcupine suit. Uh, with It had retractable quills, as Porcupines do, Um and eventually he took on the identity of being the porcupine, although he wasn't very good at being a supervillain. Um, so he kind of retired that and he ended up helping out Captain America in one of the battles in which he was helping Captain America. He stabbed himself with his own quill by accident. He ended up uh, dying. And then someone else took up the identity of porcupine and porcupine ended up being a member of the, say it with me, Thunderbolts. Very good. Uh, the Thunderbolts. Um, we also get introduced to Saracen. And I couldn't find him in my encyclopedia, but I did look him up on the Marvel Wiki online. And basically all that I found about him was that he is another vampire that we get introduced to um, in these two episodes. And he was basically a part of the OG group of vampires. Okay. That's pretty much it. Um, so then upon, um, you know, entering this group, none other who, who walks in, but the guy, one of the guys who attacked Jen in the alleyway with the Asgardian um, um, construction Alex. tools. Yeah. He has, uh, he had like a, an enchanted crowbar, as he said, um, Right, so I'm really glad I looked into that. Um, also, some Easter eggs that I noticed here in the in the background was the Obama Stay poster. There was a few yeah. of those around that said, like, as you say in yoga, Namaste, but Obama Stay. Um, you saw some quotes by um, Emil Blonsky on posters in the background, like, today is today. You know, he's very zen. He's very in control of who he yeah, is. He's very love, let's live in the moment type of guy. I love the new Emil Blonsky because like Tim Roth, he's played like the menacing villain so many times in other things. Yeah. He's also played like comedic in so many things. But here it's like he gets to evolve from like that menacing villain to the comedic guy. But he's it's the zenness, it's the chillness that is the funniest part. You know, just him just so nonchalant, yeah. laid back, relaxed. Like that is so fun. Just because a lot of the characters are so high energy in this franchise, it's nice to have someone who's just kind of like, you know, just lays back, relaxes. Um, but not yeah. Taika Waititi, like kind of like Taika Waititi in a way, but kind you know, of, a little, yeah, a little less dry. But yeah, yeah, he's uh, uh honestly, I'll, I'll just go out and say it. I'll, I'll stop being a coward about it. He is my favorite part of this show. I think that this I, I, this I this episode. This episode really like drove that point home for me. I just enjoyed I just enjoyed all meeting all of these different guys so much. And the fact that he's reformed his life. I'm really hoping that this doesn't all end up being like a ruse. This isn't just like a facade of like the real Emil underneath that's just trying to get back to like being a villain. I really hope that this is an actual like uh, character development arc that Emil has gone through. Uh, but I guess we won't find out until the end, Dill, who's behind all of this. Um, 
So obviously when this guy comes in, Jen is pissed. She's like, this guy attacked me in an alleyway. It was four on one. Uh, you know, like, uh, obviously, like, I'm a superwoman. But if I was just any other woman, um, it could have been really bad for me. Um, and everyone's like, hey, 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 like, relax, Jen. Like, he's like a new man now. Just like, hear him out. Like, let's have a conversation. So basically, he, he uh, opens up about how he's He's been reforming himself and how he doesn't feel like he needs to, you know, be a super villain to feel whole, essentially. Mm -hmm. And Jen ends up opening up to the group about her uh, troubles with Josh, how she feels like, you know, she she goes into this whole monologue about how, you know, people have ever since she's become She-Hulk, like she's just felt like She-Hulk is the half of her that people have preferred in her life. You know, she helps out with you know, protecting people. She's super strong. She can move furniture around. Like she saw, like she was doing all those, um, helping her dad with all those things around the house. She was protecting the, um, uh, uh, parole officer in the beginning of this episode. She went on all those dates with those guys. Like she just feels like, you know, she Hulk is the cooler, um, better version of herself. Um, so obviously she feels you know, like a little inadequate as Jen and that Jen isn't as cool or isn't as wanted. And finally she found this one guy that, you know, really just liked her for Jen and he really just liked Jen. And now that he's not, you know, he's completely ghosting her. It feels like, you know, uh, a really harsh form of rejection here. Mm -hmm. And the guys end up giving her a lot of helpful advice. Well, at first they want to kill him. They're like, let's fucking find this guy and murk his ass because he doesn't even deserve you. But then the the guy from the wrecking crew is like, hey, 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 listen, we don't just we we don't only can offer violence here. You know, like that's not the only thing we can supply with supply Jen. You know, she she deserves better. She deserves our advice, our words. You know, we're not just a group of vigilantes here. Um, so they end up giving her a lot of like helpful advice. They're saying like, Hey, like, you know, Jen's pretty cool. Even though there's one guy out there who doesn't like Jen, there's a group of guys here that thinks Jen is really cool and would like to spend some time with her and, and all that jazz. Um, so Jen ends up feeling a lot better with herself. She deletes Josh's number as she should, because she's already texted him twice. And that's way more times than I would have texted him because if he got up in the morning and left without saying goodbye, all hell would have broken loose. As I said before. So she deletes his number. Um, and you know, she says that she's hurting for a, for a yurt. Uh, and she spends some time in the yurt, which is basically yeah. just like a sauna, a sweat lodge, you know, she yep. sweats it out. Um, a tow truck comes to uh, pick her up and she leaves the compound. Um, and as she's leaving, you know, she has this newfound confidence in her. She's like, you know what? I'm glad I'm moving. I'm moving on from this, from this man, from this situation. I feel brand new. I feel relaxed. I feel more me than ever. We cut to three days earlier. Flashback to the night in question when it happened. And we see that josh in the middle of the night you know is getting ready to leave he's copying all the data from jen's phone onto his phone and takes a picture of her while she's sleeping sends it to someone with the name the hulk king hulk king um and says sends him the needle emoji with the blood in it the syringe emoji the little beaker emoji that's filled with some green goo and the thumbs up emoji insinuating uh, that Josh took some of her blood, and I just yep. feel like if he did, we should have we should have shown it because I don't really know if he did or not. Yeah, are we I just mean, assuming that he did? Yeah, he he did. Um, and and I I just know that because you know like following along with the because I, I was looking through the recap for some names of things and actors and stuff, and I did see at the end like he did take a blood sample. My thing is like, all right, I, I, I don't know how you get that without waking her up. And like how you take a picture mm. of her without waking, like I, I might just be a light enough sleeper, but like I, I bet <laughs> if someone took a flash photo right here and like someone like draw blood from me, and like I get it could have been a really light needle, but like he had to have injected her somehow, unless right. she was, unless she had a nosebleed in the middle of the night because of allergies or if she was on her period. I don't see how you're going to get blood mm. any other way. And right. I think that's like why I'm like, I don't know. 
Um, so that was weird to me, unless there was also blood on her, like he used some sort of her phone, but it seemed like he was just using her phone to get data or something. I, I don't yeah. really know. Um, unless so her really like know medical records are on her phone and he got her blood type, but like, I don't even know how See, that's I think, useful. I think, I think the thing is he wanted actual blood because he's going to inject someone right. who's going to become the Hulk. Uh, and no, I think yeah. I know, and I think this goes back to my theory. I think it's Titania. Um, only because she is the main villain and she hasn't done anything particularly villainous. She's only right, done like annoying right, right. things. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I saw it coming, which is why I wasn't like, oh, OMG to that twist. But I'm also like, just the structure of the series, like I said, is so weird. Cause it's like, we're now just getting like this big climactic moment and there's two episodes left. It almost feels like we either should have condensed this and made this happen halfway through, or we could have gotten rid of the wedding altogether and just had the wedding be the first five minutes of this. Like, I, I, was, I just sure. don't know. It just feels weird the way that it's structured to where we only have two episodes left. We're still waiting on Dead, uh, not Deadpool, Daredevil, which <laughs> is not a huge deal because like it's not his show, but at the same time, when you've advertised him so much and you teased him at the end of episode five, um, you know, and it's two episodes later, he still hasn't shown up. I, I, you know, you have to ask that question. When's he coming? Pug, we haven't seen him in two episodes. Um, mm. You know, like, we, we didn't get anything from back home in this episode. It was all about Jen, which was fine because we got a lot about Blonsky. But, you know, like, I just feel like it's it's now tackling a lot of different plots, which I don't love about these shows that I hope it resolves uh, in a satisfying manner, considering we only have an hour left of it, considering we have two two uh, two half hour episodes left to go. Um, I just hope they wrap it up well. I hope they resolve it well. Um, yeah, that's all I can really say. I mean, I'm yeah. intrigued to see what where this goes. Um, but I think it's just going to kind of be the same thing where the, the Incredible Hulk did, where there's going to be someone who takes the serum or whatever, becomes a Hulk, aka the Abomination, uh, and challenges She Hulk. And that's going to be like your battle, and she'll have Daredevil help her out. Like, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, mm. Unless Daredevil's the one who wants the blood. In that case, <laughs> that would be very interesting and honestly a bold story choice that I'd love to see. A blind Hulk? I don't know. Seems seems counterintuitive. <laughs> um, you know, Dill, something that I did notice that in in the first episode that I forgot to mention was that on the Intelligentsia website that Mallory and Nikki were looking at, that the person who created the whole, like, I hate She-Hulk page with all those, like, death threats on it, his name, well, I didn't see the name, but it had the same icon of, like, the green man with the crown on it, which is the Hulk the Hulk King's um, mm. logo seemingly oh, was okay. on that page. So maybe he's the creator of the page. Maybe uh, I, I don't know what's going on. And, and, and that makes it more of an actual plot point then. So it wasn't dismissed. That That's a good point. All right. Well, right. I take back what I said then <laughs> about well, the, uh, so the I think, plot line is done. But I think that we're, I think that we're now moving on to kind of figure out who this Hulk King is. Maybe it has something to do with Titania. Maybe it has nothing to do with Titania. Maybe it ends with Jen and Titania, you know, joining forces at the end of all of this. You know, maybe, maybe. they become friends. Maybe, maybe she is the big baddie at the end. Maybe she is the Hulk King. Um, where I, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't have many guesses, but I, I, or maybe Hulk King like is. Hulk is, is Mark Ruffalo, and, and I don't know why he needs blood. Maybe for something else he's working on? I don't know. Um, I don't that, know. That I think Bruce sense. is in as is uh, in Sakaar right now or something. You're, he's he's like off-world. I don't know what he's true, doing. True. Yeah, I but know. I don't know. This, this episode 7 was so fun and such a delight to watch that I am still excited for the yeah, final two episodes. Um, yeah. Especially well, if they as bring you these said, I... back. They could be one-offs, but I like the idea of, like, at the end, hey, we need your help. Um, I'd love to see that. Um, especially, we didn't even talk about this, the porcupine where he takes off his mask and everyone's like, oh, oh. Oh, um, yeah, 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 that, was, that, that I remember. Crazy. I it's did make a note so of that, bad, actually. But, um, yeah. Lovely characters, though. Like, I really yeah. do like like the group of characters. I like the humor here. Like, this felt very sitcom. This felt like what the last episode thought it was doing like setting sending jen off on her own little side episode to do some character building whereas i feel like that was this episode as well where she went off on the side quest it was just her and these other characters one that we had already mm. seen before all these other new characters but right. like this one actually seemed to progress her story more than the last one did. the last one introduced her to the love interest that was the only purpose it had this one actually had a purpose in showing her you know her worth and and like actually her growth her as a yeah 
showing Emil's growth as a character, considering he's mm-hmm. also not just in the show, he's in so many other, well, or one other MCU project and kind of Shang-Chi. But like, you know, like just seeing that character growth and just introducing us to fun comic book characters that feel like, you know, just extra added flourishes to this overall universe, which I love to see, you know? Not every character has to be the main character or part of the Avengers. We can have like, just these other random superhumans walking around. And I hope that's where we get to with more Marvel, is just seeing more pockets of the, the universe, like the guy who kills himself and then reanimates. Like, you know, he's not ever going to be a main character, but I like him because it just adds more to this world and makes it feel more superhero otherworldly uh, while also yeah. still based in reality, which I like. So, yeah, for sure. Cool. Yeah, that's that's two Good episodes. Stuff, we got two, two left. Any any last thoughts on these calls? Um, No. Yeah, don't trust, don't trust <laughs> Josh. Um, Kelsey, where can don't they Don't trust you? a Josh. <laughs> where can you they find can- you? You can find me on Instagram at Kelsey A. Kilpatrick. You can find me on TikTok at Cause13, or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Cause yeah. Productions. And you can find me at Dylan underscore and Dezzo, Twitter and or Letterbox. I'm doing a 31 days of Halloween. It's my third year. Uh, I posted the calendar to Instagram yes, uh, a few days ago. Um, and then yesterday, well, I guess two days ago, October 1st, I started. Uh, this year's theme is A through Z. So I'm starting with the number. So 28 days later was my first movie. And then I'm starting with A and then going to B, C, D. And every day is going to be a different letter. Um, obviously skipping over some days because of new releases like Halloween Ends is coming out. So I'll obviously not, you know, I'll just watch that when it comes out. Mm-hmm. But um, that's going to be my theme this year is, is 26 letters plus a number that's 27 plus two new releases, which is 29 plus the two I watch every year, which is Halloween and Hocus Pocus. And then I forget what the other one is. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm, nice. I'm doing horror, horror A through Z. So you can go on my letterbox and follow along with that. I will not be doing any videos of that, but because you know I can't make 31 videos in a month, I will drive myself insane. Uh, right. On top of that, I'm doing New York Film Fest stuff. Uh, you can look at my channel for that because I will be posting reviews for all this stuff I see at New York Film Festival. It's not a lot this year. Um, and uh, next week, instead of She-Hulk, we're going to celebrate the holiday season by watching the new show or special, Werewolves, Werewolf by Night. It comes out mm-hmm. on Friday. We'll be watching it um for next episode and then the the week after we'll be talking about the finale so episode nine and episode eight which we all have missed uh deadpool will or daredevil will supposedly show up in that um so next week we're going to be talking about the hugh jackman news and watching werewolf by night the week after episodes eight and nine and the week after that we have the number one contender match jd versus mal or not not malcolm sorry jd versus noah jd b malcolm JD and Noah will face off. The winner will play in December. This one. So we're going to find out who Kelsey's opponent is going to be. Um, so a really exciting three weeks in store. Kelsey, are you excited for all of it? I, of course I am, Dill. I, as I've been saying, I'm also, I'm as nervous as I am excited. So the studying starts now. It's October third when we release this but i i marked that the beginning of october yeah. would be the time where i started my epic rewatch of all the projects happening um literally there's so many now there's so mm-hmm. many more since we started doing trivia um a year ago so yeah, yeah it's gonna be a lot to learn it's gonna yeah. be a lot to you know memorize and 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 all that but i'm excited yeah. i'm so excited last... and confident yeah one last reminder october 10th Werewolf by Night. October 17th, the last two episodes of She-Hulk. October 24th, number one contender match. And October 31st is a Monday. It is Halloween, and we've got something fun planned for you. We don't know what that is yet, but we will. Um, And we can't wait to share share what that's going to be. Everyone have a great night um, or great day, and uh, stay safe. We'll see you next time.